Welcome to Gruesome, your horrific true crime podcast. I'm Connie, along with future tap da- dancer of America, Meg. Tonight, she's going to tell you about the Dupont de Ligonnès family murders. I've never tap danced in my life. Like, I've, I've worn watch- extra clicky shoes and, like, pretended. But <laughs> it could be. It could but- be me. But first, if you have ever thought to yourself you would like to start a podcast, now is the best time you can record remotely on Zencaster. You literally need minimal equipment, minimal skills, and you'll have maximum quality. That's a pretty good one, right? Yeah, yeah, look at you. <laughs> so if you if this sounds like something you want to do, please go to Zencaster.com slash pricing, enter promo code gruesome with a capital G or follow the link in any of our bios and save 30% off your first three months. Yay, do it. Back to tap dancing. (laughs) No, I'm not tap dancing anytime soon for any of you. But if you can tap dance, I'd love to, I'd love for you to tag us so I can watch it. I'll watch it from afar. There's something special about adults tap dancing that just makes me go, that's like strange and wonderful at the same time. I feel like I've always kind of drugged my feet when I walked anyway, so I think I'm a tap dancer. <laughs> that's what it is. Just trying to... <laughs> France. France, you're up in our tour of Europe. And I am going to talk about the DuPont de Ligonis family. Um, but I know that there was an episode on this when they revamped Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. That's kind of why I want to talk about it because it's horrifying and insane. And the perpetrator has never been caught. What? Yeah, they're still wild and free. Well, I'm actually kind of glad you said that now. Versus on the well, I think I don't think it takes anything away from the craziness to know that this person is when we say it at the end, you'll still be like, oh my goodness, like either way. So triggeries, triggeries, that's weird. Triggers, uh family annihilation. So I think we can kind of associate that with domestic violence, dead animals, murder in general. There was one I saw early. Oh, uh, suicide. Pot- potentially. Okay. So we're going to open it up. April 13th, 2011. Oh, this is like recent. Yeah. Kind of. Ten years. But yes. <laughs> Okay, so Estelle Chapon called police in Nantes, France. Her neighbor's home had been closed up tight. What was usually a bustling family home with people coming and going. The shutters were open. Dogs were barking. This home had been dark and silent for days, which was strange because her neighbors hadn't mentioned that they were going anywhere. She saw them pretty frequently. She did work for them. She did, like, laundry for them, and they had never, they hadn't said anything. It got stranger because there was a note on their mailbox that said, please return all correspondence to sender. And she was just, you know, I'm going to call the police. This is sketchy. So having a nosy neighbor pays off sometimes, as we will learn. The police arrived to check on the house, but all of the doors and windows were locked. And after they were finally able to enter the home, they found nothing out of the ordinary. They had a locksmith come, unlock it, they went in. Some of the beds had been stripped, some closet doors were open, but it looked like the family had left together. Estelle disagreed. Her neighbor's cars were still there, with the exception of Javier Du. Pont Ligonesse's vehicle. Did I say that right? Dupont de Ligonesse. Sorry. <laughs> it's a long last name. Uh, with the exception of his vehicle, she was pretty sure that their dogs, all of this family, 
they had four kids and two adults and all of their stuff, they wouldn't have all fit into just his car. So on April 15th, the police come back to search the house again. And this time, because Javier's wife, Agnes, her family was also becoming adamant that, that this, this family did not just up and leave and not tell anyone. So the police go in. Again, they find nothing that indicated anything out of the ordinary. So police actually issue a wanted notice for anyone in this family because no one had seen them. They came back six times before they found something strange. So police left and came back and left and came back six separate times until while they were searching the back terrace, police found large plastic trash bags that had been closed and wrapped up with tape. They opened the bags and found the bodies of two teenagers, an adult child, and Agnes wrapped in sheets and duvet covers. They continued to search. They uncovered the remains of two dogs, and a third location revealed Agnes and Javier's fourth child. So... To kind of start after this, we're going to rewind to the beginning of it. Because this is just like a dirt path of chaos. We're going to start with Javier, which when I read it, it reads like Xavier, but the French pronunciation is Javier. So if you see it written and you're like, why is she saying it like that? That's She's why. wrong. My, go- my Googler told me it was Javier. So, and I read several things about the DuPont de Ligonis family uh, and how they're like an aristocratic family, which I don't fully understand. I didn't fully understand until I read more about it, but it's kind of like they're higher class. They held titles. His Mm -hmm. father was actually a count and they lived in Versailles. Oh, wow. uh, Until his dad dipped and left Javier with his grandmother when he was like around 10. So then a decade later, he was still in Versailles, and he met his wife, Agnes. Uh, Javier Dupont Dupont de Ligonis and Agnes Dupont de Ligonis started their relationship in 1992. They had actually started talking when he was, like, 20 and she was 17, but he went and, like, traveled, and when he came back, he found out that she was already pregnant. Uh, But he married her anyways, and he adopted her son, Arthur, and raised him as his own, you know? Admirable. From there, they continued to have children. Together, they had Thomas in 1992. They had Anne in 1994 and Benoit in 1997. And this was a seemingly happy upper middle class family. They were very Catholic. Their kids went to Catholic school. They did mass. Agnes worked at a Catholic school as a teaching assistant. Um, Javier had gone to school and he was, his degree, he was an engineer. But he just started businesses. And these businesses were not good. He was not a good businessman. (laughs) In fact, most of them put him into debt. Oh, okay. uh, And he started them all over the country in different cities. He even had a business registered in Florida, the U.S. And the one in Florida was called NetSurf Concept. And it, he registered this in 1998. And this company helped people open foreign bank accounts. And then they were somehow able to get bank cards, which would allow them to withdraw money from anywhere in the world without a trace. So that sounds sketchy. That's legitimately my next sentence. It says, which just sounds sketchy. It does (laughs) sound sketchy. In the early 2000s, he started CellRef which was, it's like a very vague sales company. He hired like six salespeople and then immediately fired them. Again, just real sketch. He didn't, these companies, they don't feel very thought out. And they didn't make him any money, which brings me to several years later. We're going to shift forward to 2010 and 11. So in January of 2011, 
Xavier's dad had a heart attack and died. I did. I just did it. It's Javier's. Javier's dad had a heart attack and died. When he was at his father's apartment, cleaning out his things, handling the, you know, what you have to do after the death of a parent, he was allegedly, according to a neighbor, looking for money. But his dad actually died in poverty despite being a count. He couldn't, he was looking for this uh, like family signet ring, like a family crest kind of thing, and he couldn't find it. Um, but he was able to take a 22 caliber rifle from his father's apartment. He got his license for it less than a month later in February. In March, he bought ammo and a silencer after visiting a shooting range and talking with the salesperson there. He actually visited that shooting range with the rifle about four times between March 26th and April 1st. At the end of March, he drove about four hours away to a store to buy trash bags and large pavers. Okay, so this is January 2011 to March-ish, the end of March. And now we're going to go to April of 2011. Same year, just a couple months in the future. Arthur, who's the oldest son, he was studying IT. Um, he had already gotten a degree, but then he went back to technical school to get a, to, like a technical degree in internet stuff. Uh, when he wasn't studying, he was also a server at a pizzeria. Arthur was 20. On April 1st, the pizzeria where he worked expected him to come in to pick up his check, and he never did, which was unlike him. He always picked it up on the first of the month, no matter what. On Saturday, April 2nd, Javier, the dad, was seen again shopping at several different shops in the area that they lived, Nant. He bought four bags of quicklime, cement, a shovel, and a hoe all from separate shops. On Sunday, April 3rd, a neighbor of Javier and Agnes saw them, saw the couple. They recalled seeing Javier putting very large bags into his vehicle, and then the whole family, except for Arthur, went to get dinner, and they went to a movie. Afterwards, Javier called his sister and left her a voicemail. And the voicemail is pretty normal. Just like, oh, I can't believe this thing that happened that she had told him happened. Um, but at the end of the voicemail, he said that he was going to put the kids to bed. Which these kids are teenagers, like 13, 16, 18, 20 years old, you know. And then he said, see you soon. Maybe. Again, weird, sketchier and sketchier. That Monday, Anne and Benoit did not show up to school. Thomas, who was 18, actually had dinner with his dad on Monday night at kind of a fancy restaurant. And I'm not sure what Thomas did exactly after dinner, but the next day he was hanging out with a friend and his dad called him and asked him to come home because his mother had been hurt in a cycling accident. His friends said that they received messages from him saying that he wasn't going to be in class. His mom had hurt himself. He was going to go to mu He wasn't going to go to music rehearsal. He was going to go to class. It was also pretty unlike him to do that. Tuesday, a debt collector came to their door to, to collect $20,000 but no one answered. Wednesday, now the 6th, Arthur's girlfriend, the 20-year-old's girlfriend, hasn't heard from him in almost a week. She's worried. She knocked on the door. No one answered. But she thought she heard a noise inside. It was weird, though, that their dogs didn't bark when she knocked because the family had two Labrador retrievers. The seventh is where we start to find some almost like conflicting information or misinformation. 
because the neighbors claim that they saw Agnes walking their dogs on the 7th. They allegedly spoke with her. The neighbor cut their conversation off because they had to go get their kid from the babysitter. A friend of Agnes agreed that she had also seen Agnes at a shop on the 7th. Friday, April 8th, was the last time that the IP address from the family's home was used. Javier emailed his sister's husband his sister, and his mother. And the weekend is pretty quiet, but on Monday the 11th, so now the next week, Xavier, oh my gosh, I keep doing it. (laughs) On Monday the 11th, Javier sent a letter and a final payment to Anne and Benoit's school. He told the school that they were leaving because the family was moving to Australia. And then the Catholic school that Agnes worked at got pretty much the same letter, except a resignation letter. Um, But the headmaster couldn't get a hold of anyone to talk to her. Two days before Agnes's letter had arrived at the school, Javier had told the headmaster that she had a stomach bug and she wouldn't be in. The lease on their house was also terminated. All of their bank accounts are closed after this. Mm. Everything is just getting shut down. Also on the 11th, Javier's immediate family gets a letter stating pretty much that he has actually secretly been working for the DEA and that the entire family is relocating to the U.S. as part of the Witness Protection Program. He says that he won't be able to talk to him for several years um, and asks that they don't tell anyone about this, but just say that they went to Australia. And there's there's a little bit of a conspiracy theory around this letter because uh, it's not confirmed that Javier himself wrote it. But I'll kind of read how it starts to you. So it says, hi, everyone! Exclamation point. Huge surprise, we have to leave urgently for the U.S. due to a very particular set of circumstances that we will explain below. You're receiving this letter by conventional post because for the next few years we can't communicate any other way. No emails, no texts, no phone calls. For safety reasons. When you read this letter, we will no longer be in France and we won't be able to return for an as of yet, for an as yet undetermined period of time, probably a few years. And this is when he goes into talking about he's starting a company in Miami in 2003 and the DEA wanted to infiltrate the French nightclub scene to get information about drug trafficking and money laundering. So he was working with them and (laughs) He had a mission, essentially, under the condition that he maintained secrecy, but secrecy was broken. So now he has to leave because he and his family, they're in danger. From a nightclub drug scene. From, yes. He's like in his 50s? um, He was born in 62, I think. Maybe. So. I think he was in his 50s, yeah. Do the math there. <laughs> he was 49. Okay. So, yes. If, if I'm at a club, even if I am doing drugs, and some 49-year-old man is like, hey, <laughs> where are the good drugs at? I'd be like, you're a cop. Because uh, you're definitely getting into that situation. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, no way, you look like a cop. I'd be like, I am a cop. Hey, like that Spider-Man meme. <laughs> you. You. Uh, that so, makes no, what I'm getting at is that makes no sense. Yeah. And he continues to like assign different jobs to his family members in this letter. He tells them that they had to give up the dogs, but someone took both of them so they won't be separated. He assigns like cleaning out the house of their belongings to one of their family members, selling their cars to another family member. And you should know that during this time, 
Javier is staying in hotels until he eventually abandons his car at the final one and disappears. One evening, he was staying in a town that he had lived in briefly as a 21-year-old, and he contacted an old girlfriend. And this girlfriend said that she never actually met up with him, but he did contact her. April 14th, 2011 was the last time anyone can confirm seeing Javier Dupont de Ligonis. Last time. So that kind of coincides with that initial April 13th date where Estelle, the neighbor, called the police. So she calls the police, takes some six visits to inevitably find the bodies of Agnes Arthur and Benoit Thomas and the two dogs. Yes, I know. It's a lot. Autopsies are done and it's determined that the children, and I say children because it's they're their children, but I understand they're like young adults. Um, they all had sleeping pills in their system before they were shot with a twenty two caliber long rifle. Each one of them had two bullets to the head. Investigators believe that Agnes was shot before the sleeping children. They had all been in pajamas in their beds. Neighbors did not hear any gunshots, but it's believed that the murderer used a silencer. There was absolutely no blood spatter anywhere in this house. There was no physical evidence of this happening in the house. Which is crazy, right? There's five people and two dogs. Uh, Their bodies had been cremated and then buried on April 30th. By May 10th, there is an international arrest warrant out for Javier Dupont de Ligonis. But again, to this day, he has never been found. And this is, I'm sure there is still information out there about this case that we don't know because this isn't technically solved, right? But I will give some theories, conspiracy and otherwise, that people think happened. And investigators think, one, that he committed suicide, which is not uncommon uncommon for a family annihilator, as we know. Mm-hmm. Um, they did extensive searches. They raided a monastery in 2018 because they got all these like tips that he had been hiding there. Uh, and the monastery actually just had a monk that looked kind of like <laughs> that guy. So that's Bad luck, guy. Yeah, rough luck. Uh, but a lot of investigators lean towards this theory because he has never been recovered or even seen, right? In June of 2013, a body was found about 12 miles from where he was last seen and then they did an autopsy but they couldn't actually exclude the possibility that it was him yeah uh they said that at the moment in time it's not his body but they didn't say anything other than that just like at this time it's not him but tomorrow it's like maybe it could be eventually yeah Uh, They found bones in 2015, also very close to where he was last seen, and they were also ruled out. And then in mid-July of 2015, a NAMP journalist received a picture. And on the back was a handwritten note that said, I'm still alive. And the picture was of two of their children. It was Arthur and Benoit. They were just sitting at the kitchen table. No one knows who took it. No one knows who sent it. That's creepy. I don't think it, I don't know. Based on how like planned out everything seems like it was, I don't know that they would, why would you send a picture? I don't know. Yeah, I don't makes think sense so. To me. What are the theories about him disappearing? Because that's. Um, they're. They're theorized that he's in America. 
He's in, he's just going through different companies or different companies, different countries. He's in South America. It's really all theories are open because there, no one has technically seen him. Um, in 2019, a guy got arrested at the Glasgow airport in Scotland because they thought he had a fake passport and they thought it was Javier, but it was actually just a guy visiting his wife and he was released without charge. Uh, that guy just had his passport stolen in 2014 and he had a valid replacement passport, but he had been traveling on the one that he had for some did reason. He, did he have any life insurance policies? Like nothing was paid out? There's nothing that says that. I would imagine probably, but nothing that I could read, even if it was like, could he have gotten it with the amount of money that he owed to other people, you know? Can you hear that in the background? Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, it's done. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, it's just weird that he would go through. His sister and his like family's lawyer do not think that this happened to him. They think that he was framed somehow, or they think that um, they don't even believe that the bodies found in the yard belonged to his family. They think they just belong to people around the same age. But that doesn't explain him going and buying all of the things found. Mm -hmm. What if he really is in the witness protection pro program? <laughs> that would be crazy. I don't think that's it, but I don't either. Um, in July 2020, when this aired on Unsolved Mysteries, uh, they got like 2,000 tips discussing this and there was a sighting in chicago and the tip said that there was a couple and they heard someone talking in french and they had just seen the episode so they took a picture of him and it looked like him so could be chilling in the midwest you know but motives i i agree that i think it's probably money i think it's but i don't think it's him trying to get money I think it's him trying to escape his life and not also, and also like not wanting to look yeah. like he, um, he had like an account on a, like a forum and had posted at one point in like 2010 that if, if his family ever if something ever happened to his family they would try to blame him but just know that it wasn't him so that's part of why they think his family actually thinks he was framed is because he said this and then his wife though um also posted in like she was very religious and she posted in this catholicism forum that her husband mentioned that a mass suicide would not be a bad way for them to all go and then he also had this, you know, it's like arist aristocracy about his family and him, you know, murdering his sons is like murdering his lineage. And they think that maybe they he murdered Thomas last because he wasn't sure that he wanted to do it because it was like his eldest, like blood relative mm -hmm. or blood son, sorry. So there's it's just of weird theories, and it's a weird case. Where the hell did he go? What? And then he had the company, right? The company that mm -hmm. makes out of country Make bank account, out of country bank accounts, out of sorry, these bank accounts that are untraceable and you can take money from anywhere at any time. Like, what's that about? Why didn't and he take some of that money and use it to pay himself out? Maybe he did. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I... I don't know that I think he committed suicide. I, I don't think he... I, I think he's probably hiding somewhere. Yeah, that's what I think. Because why would you go through all of the trouble of hiding the bodies if you are going to commit suicide? Hiding the bodies? Covering up, like every aspect of that trail you know like he... yeah because if he was just gonna why does he what does he care if, what people think if he is going to kill himself and his entire family he would not have called the kids out of school 
He would not have withdrew his wife, like like had her resigned. He wouldn't have sent that letter to his family. It Canceled have- the lease, closed the bank accounts. And there's it's actually all- a car that has never been seen to this day as well. There's a car missing. So he had his car. I think they had three. Her car was still at the house. And then they had like a, another vehicle that just disappeared. His, his car was found at a hotel where he abandoned it that same time that he has never been seen since. And his last thing he was seen on surveillance camera. That was the last time he saw it. It was seen. But it seems I mean, interesting that a whole car also disappeared. I mean, like, it's not think, uncommon though. Send it to a junkyard, smash it up. Maybe, but then we're also seeing all these cases where getting solved from like the 60s and the 70s where someone drove their car into like a lake or a body of water and they couldn't yeah, find that's it. True. And now I suddenly feel- they can find it. Maybe he meant to escape and sweet sweet jesus justice did him in and he just drove into a lake that like on be, accident that would be like a beautiful mess honestly i just don't see him going through all of that trouble and then committing suicide i don't either i agree um, the, the only he came back Suddenly. Yeah, unless he, like, got, like, after he, like, got away, he was like, what the hell did I just do? Like, maybe he had, like, secondary trauma from it, like, guilt, you know. Another reason that they think it might be a frame job is because he apparently had, like, back and neck troubles, right? So, like, he had, he was physically ailed. And the terrace is like, think of it like a like a porch. And mm-hmm. these bodies had been buried under the porch. And someone had moved like five tons of earth to get these bodies buried appropriately. What if someone killed his family and then he realized it and bolted? Like they were coming for his money or something? Or they were like coming for Or he for owed him? someone money. Yeah, maybe. And as a debt collector knocked on his door for twenty grand, if yeah. he is like in deep with other people that owe him money, I think that's what his lawyer and his sister thinks happened. That he was going to be framed, and he was either m- murdered or left. I just still don't see him sending all that mail if he didn't. Yeah, and I just think it's crazy that there was no, they didn't find any blood in the house. They didn't find any, the place where they were digging to bury, there was only like four feet of standing room. So someone had to like crouch over to like dig this area out. And there's no, they like checked the bottom of the, the porch and there's no head bumps there was nothing that's real weird There's no dna under there other than those dna found like of the victims yeah could he have murdered them outside well they were wrapped in their sheets from their beds remember their beds were empty and they felt they were in their pajamas he could have carried them out in their sheets they had i think it's weird though that if he shot them in their beds and, like, rolled them up in their sheets and there wasn't any, like, the beds were there. They were just stripped of their sheets. There wasn't, like, a bullet hole in the bed. Yeah, that's what I would think of him taking them by the sheets. Like, you can carry someone almost like a, you know, like, like a, a sleeping hammock. bag. That yeah. hammock style. And then shooting them outside. If he used a silencer, the neighbor still may not hear it, and there wouldn't be any evidence inside. And that could be, or he could have drugged them outside. Maybe he they were, like, near fatal dose of sleeping pills. Oh, yeah, maybe. The, maybe and is. he, like, drugged them outside. Because that would eliminate, like, if he had neck problems, he could still, like, probably pull. But how did he dig it all? Like, Yeah, I don't know. 
And then they were also, I mean, they were in those bags because they, those bags did have that quick lime in them to like Mm -hmm. disintegrate the bodies, which is why they said that you can't prove it was even them. You could just say it was someone like of the same, around the same ages. It's just strange, right? It's weird. Like, I see why it got an Unsolved Mysteries episode. I see why it's so intriguing. There's so much information there that you're like, but why? But why? Do you remember that first scary movie where Deputy Dewey or whatever, Doofus, however they say in that one, he, like, has all these, like, physical ailments until the end, and he's, like, walking, and he slowly stops having all of those. Like, it mm-hmm. was, like, a whole facade. Maybe he was perfectly fine. Oh, maybe he was. Or maybe his sister's just covering for him. Because, I mm-hmm. mean, if it's an heiress, you know, I again, I don't know a whole lot about how those families work, but I'm sure there's a fair bit of, like, my family could never do something like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, no one wants to think that their family members could do anything like this. Yeah, shout out to, like, Prince Andrew, right? Like, <laughs> that's, like that's the vibe I get, though. If you think you're above being these, like, horrific circumstances that your family would, would never be involved in such things, and yet they are. It makes me wonder, I just... Okay, my most logical idea is if he did not kill his family, then he owed someone a lot of money who did. And he is on the run. Or his body is never going to be found. It's somewhere else. Like someone else murdered him. Someone quick limed him. But if he murdered his family, I don't see him committing suicide. He went through too much trouble. I agree. I'm with you on that. I I could see it going either way. Yeah. Like, or, or even being of the mindset, like, I'm, I'm murdering them to save them. Yeah. Which is like a sick mindset. I'm not advocating for that at all, but just, I'm trying to just see how this could <laughs> how this could play out in someone's brain i i think he got in too deep somewhere i that is also i on the very bottom of my little script that i write for myself it put motive in too deep money mm-hmm. that's legit what i wrote because you you're read my script through my brain tonight <laughs> if maybe a <laughs> maybe all of these like phony money front companies that he has money laundering money laundering companies or any of that maybe he maybe just laundering money for other people yeah you don't just start you don't you don't do that like no one is a poor businessman on purpose unless there's a reason that's true there's Something, and that's why I think also because this case isn't technically closed, right? I think there's more of that information that will inevitably come out. Yeah, I didn't see it, I haven't found it. Maybe it's somewhere out there on some like obscure forum that I never read, you know, where this is it's definitely inspired like a whole like. You know, social media detective force, though. There's lots of people that are like, I see it. What if he was here? What if this happened? And I see why. I see why. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would hope that he would, if he annihilated his entire family, he wouldn't be able to live with himself and he would take his own life. But (laughs) otherwise, he's just out there scamming someone else. I did laugh at that, but (laughs) it was rough. (laughs) The way you said it. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm with you. Not that I would ever wish that on anyone. I'm just saying, if you're going to kill your entire family, I have zero sympathy for anything that happens to you afterwards. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's what I, that's what I got tonight, <laughs> fam. France, help us out. 
Also, and I am sorry if I went back and forth between Javier and Xavier, because Connie can edit, but I don't know if she'll catch every single one. I did. You did? Okay, cool. Because I was like, what's happening? There you go. Woof. Yeah, that was rough. It's fine. It's hard to see words that you've read your whole life pronounced one way. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you have to pronounce them the other way. And I'm fine with it. I just, yeah, it even, it's difficult. I, I think about like reading like things and like my mom's side of the family, like, cause they're Hispanic. I think of like, even the, I would have still like, unless it was a J, I would have said Xavier. Yeah. that And that's exactly how like, I, I picture it. I picture Javier. With a J, like J A V I E R, mm-hmm. but it's just words, that man. Is. Words. Who? Well, I, I if you want to start a podcast, yeah, that's what I'm get to. <laughs> if you want to start a podcast, and maybe give us a follow up to this, you know, what do you think happened? You could do it very easily by using Zencaster. It's in browser. You get high quality 1080 video content you can post, automatic voice leveling to make you sound as good as we do. And all you have to do is use the code gruesome with a capital G at zencaster.com slash pricing and you get 30% off your first three months. And that's pretty cool. Maybe you don't even want to start a podcast. Maybe you just want to hang out on video with 10 of your closest friends on a platform that's different than some of the other ones. You can do that too. And you can record it and then post it for all of your other friends to see that they weren't invited to your internet party. Yeah. That's petty. Petty bitches. 2022. (laughs) I'm here for it. I had a petty moment at school today. What'd you do? Um, someone made an accident that sounded like they peed. Someone messed something up, okay, that they, like, it was, it directly affected me. Like, we have to, when we clean our instruments, they go through, like, sanitation, and then they go through sterilization. And someone didn't put them in sterilization. They just went from sanitation straight to, like, the where they go and we caught it but it was both of the i have like this thing called the cassette and it has all my instruments in it and both of mine had not been sterilized so we had to like do an impromptu i i it messed up my day essentially <laughs> it messed oh, maybe- up the timing of my day but i put it down who did it and I didn't tell them them because I do like them. But I was mad about it. And that's why I had it down. When they do a flash sterilization or like a flash. Uh, like we call it like flashing. it. Like if once you sanitize it, you send it to like sterilization. Like um, and our sterilization, we have like a whole floor that that's all they do. Um, it's called SPD. So SPD can flash it if you need it really fast. Oh, that's cool. No, it's, I mean, it's a clinic, so it's kind of like. It's like an autoclave. Like, like a, Yeah, we have two autoclaves and you, one of them is broken. <laughs> College like, man. One autoclave. It goes in like a, a hydrum, which is like a dishwasher. And mm-hmm. then it goes into the autoclave and then it goes into the cabinet. Are you guys' peel packed or no? Yeah. They are? Yeah. Man. Science. That feels sciencey, but it's not that sciencey. <laughs> cleaning science. I had that moment today. Uh, I was in the OR for like, uh, we had cataract surgery. So I was like looking up, watching as they were doing, like the doctor was like doing cataract surgery. And I was like, man, this is pretty freaking cool. Like, it is cool. I'm watching someone's eyeball, like a lens get removed. We put a new one in. This is cool. I love science. I I love all things like geography and science and all of it. Uh, <laughs> I'm a learned doctor. 
<laughs> this is a house of learned doctors. <laughs> this is a house of learned doctors. No, I think that's like one of the um, if you're ever around me and it's like trivial pursuit or any of those like I'm killer Jeopardy because one of the beauties of ADHD is I hyperfixate on random things and then I just am I just, just know a lot about a lot. <laughs> store that in your little like brain trunk for whenever you need to just pop it up and you're like oh ooh, piece of knowledge. Sometimes I just like will use my random tidbits of knowledge to sound like to like impress people. It's good to pull them out too. You yeah. Know? Like you hear that one thing and you just keep it in there. And at the perfect moment, you can use that piece of information. It's really impressive. <laughs> my like, fa- yes, my, I'm very smart. My favorite thing this week is when I text you and I said, hold on, I gotta, I gotta find it. Cause it was that like, this describes like Meg and I's friendship to a T. Oh, was it? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, seven o'clock in the morning, this is what I text Meg. You know, the idea that random men and women around the world speak for entire countries and those individuals could be the reason we have nuclear war for the wars that don't even pertain to the common people. This is insane. And she just said, did you sleep last night? <laughs> That's all I could think. Of. I was like, she's been up all night thinking about stuff like this. Yeah. And I, I was, did you sleep? Because you sound like you didn't. <laughs> I was on my way to dinner with my aunt on Friday, which I had the best dinner of my entire life. But I was on my way to dinner with my aunt. And my husband was like, are you okay? You've been like, are you okay? And I was like telling him how stressed out I was about nuclear war. And he like kind of laughed until he looked over and I was sobbing. (laughs) I was sobbing. And he's like, what? What is wrong? Like, are you scared of it happening? I was like, I just have this image in my head of like watching one come down and like, there's nothing I can do. He's like, that's exactly it, Connie. There's nothing you can do. And it didn't help at all. The conversation was entirely unhelpful. But then he realized he was like, oh shit, Connie, you're like... (laughs) You're having a hard time. So I had to, like, I haven't been checking social media as much, which is why, like, I hadn't been on Instagram because I I can't, like, my brain is, I can't, like. You know, it's good to take breaks. Yeah. And I just think that, like, and I'm sure, like, I am not alone in this feeling right now in this world or all over the world. There are moms and dads and family members who are Everything is so uncertain and everything is a little crazy and it's it's just like a bit much like your girl is struggling. <laughs> you know that uh those like TikToks and reels where they're like millennials going through their like it's too tenth much. world crisis you're just like no it's too much. And I have never what did it was I was scrolling through the news. You know how like Facebook has like the actual news icon. You can like see what's going on. Yeah. And it said what to do if you're in a nuclear, like it, what to do in the event of a nuclear action. And I was like, what the fuck? I have never seen this exact thing be like putting news out there, what I should do, what's happening. And that was two weeks ago and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. What's the movie? Where they have the bomb shelter and they go into it because they think it was nuclear war and then they come out and oh it has uh, the Brendan Fraser yeah Black yeah. Pass Alicia Silverstone and Brendan Fraser I it's so good I tried telling my husband <laughs> we have to buy a house with a basement so that you He's could like, build a secret bomb shelter like that yeah I was I love that it had like grass and it was just like made hot Dr like, Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> like if you gotta do it that's the way to do it yeah there's a bomb shelter airbnb i think it's in like new york that you could rent for like five hundred thousand dollars and i like was like is it really five hundred thousand um, dollars yeah that's crazy i don't i don't think it's like for the night like maybe it's like for a period of time at least i would think so i don't know 
but your girl looked into it and my bank account's not set up like that. So I need more people to sign up for our Patreon so I can <laughs> so we can get a five hundred thousand dollar bomb, bomb shelter. shelter. You guys are all invited. I just keep thinking like we live in I was like, oh my God, we live in Ohio. That was my first thought. Like and then I was like, oh my God, we live in Ohio. There's so much stuff here. Like I work on an Air Force base. I was like, I have to quit this job. I can't go to work. I actually did call into work afterwards. I was like, I can't do this shit. I can't come in today. I can't what come if? in today. Threat of nuclear war. You gotta stop gotta stop dwelling on those what ifs for right now. I know. You go too hard. I I actually keep thinking, I'm like, of course it's gonna happen when I'm in California. Because what better they're gonna be like LA got get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. Just like snap Connie it off the there. <laughs> That's why. They're going to be like, they really got to stop talking shit. <laughs> Immediately. These idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys have all had a less stressful mental health week than I have. Honestly, it's been. Been going through it. <laughs> Everybody's going through it. Yeah, it's like I a real a lot of people feel the way you feel. I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with it. It's good to reflect on those things and like, you know, determine what you can do to make yourself feel better. Like not getting on social media. That's probably a good call for you. Sometimes I get really annoyed with my husband because he's my husband and that's like a job of a husband. And then I realize when I'm having freakouts like that and I watch the panic set in on his face <laughs> where he's like She's crazy. <laughs> and then he was very understanding afterwards. And it was great, but I was over it. Yeah, yeah. and I I was I cried, but not because I was like, "Oh my god, this is going to happen." It's because I felt like he wasn't taking it serious. <laughs> and I was like, "This is really serious right now." And he was like, "Oh my god, you're like it's almost like a ha ha, you're stressed out. And I was like, oh, I'm so stressed. Like, I'm going to lose it, man. And so he, um, on Sunday, we just watched, you guys will be proud of me because you guys know my nerd trifecta <laughs> is not Lord of the Rings, but I watched it with him and I am here to say that I was more confused after I watched it than I was. Which one did you watch? The very first one. He's like, we'll start from the beginning. <laughs> and I kept saying, because I read the like I read half the book in high school and I couldn't get into it and I was like that's it I'm done I don't know who any of these people are and I know bits and pieces like just because it's 2022 but he was in the kitchen I was like who is this is that guy bad guy are they the He's same person they look the same is he a hobbit are they regular size or hobbit size <laughs> what is happening and he was like this is not enjoyable you are ruining one of my favorite movies i'm never gonna watch this again and then he tried to watch the extended version and it was like 300 hours i would still be watching that first movie right now <laughs> still be there sorry guys we can't put out an episode this week connie's been watching 300 hours of lord <laughs> of the rings while her husband tries to force her into liking it yeah he did it i i Almost called Judge Judy. It's like a crime making me sit through that. I tried to be nice. I just couldn't. But then I get the I get the allure to it because like I was so damn confused that I kept watching. You're like, but I need to know what happens. And I'm here to. I was still confused at the I end. Even, the, book, the language in the book is so. It is hard to get into. Because there's a lot of made up words in it. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? what I was like. What does that word mean? Yeah, it's you're, you're like I don't know this. Well, and I was just trying I'm to. I'm not going to take time to. This is an enjoyable learning a new language like this. Well, I did. Uh, I went to like wiki, like wiki, Lord of the Rings wiki pages yeah. to like try and figure out who people were. And I was like, Oh my god, they died! And he's like. <laughs> That's like the third movie. And I was like, You're oh, ruining it. sorry. He loves Lord of the Rings. I just, I'm still going to watch the other one. So just because now I have to see if it gets any less confusing. Hmm. Does it? Because just tell me. It, it's still confusing the whole time. Is I it? think it gets 
it's less confusing because you are watching it. Like now you like because you've looked him up, you know who the characters are. Does Orlando Bloom die? No. Okay. And then I thought that even the guy- if Orlando Bloom does die, and that's Legolas, I would never tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. Is this about- no, you can I Google thought, it. I had my <laughs> I had my timeline so messed up because like. When the character who Ned Stark plays, I don't even know any of these people's <laughs> names. The character that he plays died. I was like, oh, that makes sense. He had to film Game of Thrones. <laughs> that movie came out like way before Game of Thrones. Ned said, he's like, you are so wrong right now. I was like, I'm trying. I'm trying. And then I kept thinking that the other guy who's going to marry the elf lady, I was like, He's bad. Aragorn, Arwen. Like, no. He's like, keep watching. I'm like, all these people are bad. And then I thought Bilbo Baggins was bad because he just, at the beginning, he's like disappearing all over the place. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's... Bilbo's chaotic. But so is Gandalf. He's also chaotic. Like, yeah, he not care. he was. No, he was. And then the bird came or whatever, and they just flew off the top of the head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, man. I was like, you couldn't have done that before. <laughs> I can't wait till you watch the third one. Is it better than the second one? Can I just skip the second one? No, I think you should watch them all. Do you guys want to hear more of my play-by-play of what I think <laughs> is happening? Honestly, you should just do a, a podcast where you, um, like, you know how people do the thing where they watch an episode and then talk about the episode yeah. as they're watching it? Just do that with Lord of the Rings. I'm just going to, like, drink a bottle of wine and be like, this is what I think is happening, guys. <laughs> take Just take it, like, an hour at a time. I just so you'll be hi- there for, like, a week and a half for just one movie. And it, well, at first I saw the long hair and I was like, I know that's not Dumbledore, but I know, I know who he is. Like, I've seen Gandalf. And then I didn't know that the meme, the one does not simply. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that that was a Lord of the Rings meme. What? I did. One does not simply walk into Mordor. Yeah, that's what. That's what. Yeah, Zach was telling me he's like, because he's obsessed with Lord of the Rings. He knows all about it. But he was zero help on Sunday. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, where does the Hobbit come? What part of the movie is that? Is that a whole separate thing? Yeah, it is. Bilbo, Bilbo's story is the Hobbit. So, so like how like, Bilbo got the how Bilbo got the ring, not how like because Lord of the Rings is Frodo, right? And Frodo, and they're taking because mm-hmm. they had to destroy it. It's like a whole separate thing because there's actually more than there were. There was like seven rings. So it's like magical beasts and where to find them. Like it's like that type of spinoff, just mm-hmm. an extra early part of the story. Kind it's like of extra something something. <laughs> <laughs> like a prequel. If you can say, yes, it is the prequel to Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit is the prequel. Should I have Plus watched it that? gives you more of, like, the history on, like, like, the dwarves and the elves and, and, like, Galadriel's a badass. She's the baddest ass elf. She's my favorite character. Which, who, who plays her? Is it Kate Blanchett? Is that her name? Is it Liv Tyler? No, that's Arwen. I love her. I do, too. She's beautiful. And when that great. water came and knocked all those horses out, I was like, hell yeah, girl. I don't, like, I can't watch, like, I mean, I can and I like to, but anytime I watch, like, elves or even X-Men, I'm just like, I need those powers. Like, I just mm-hmm. get immediately sad that that's not a real thing that I have in my life, that I don't have some kind of, like, I thought that the first power. time I watched Twilight and I was like, that is not what high school boys look like at our school. <laughs> well, Twilight came out after we were out of high school. So. It came out our freshman year of college. Uh, your freshman year of college. Yeah. I didn't start college until I was 30. <laughs> freshman year of college. Uh, uh, I did read all those books, though, just because I was... I remember I was 21 years old, and I... Went to the bookstore and I bought them because I worked at Hot Topic. Yeah. So we were selling all the stuff. And I was like, I'm going to read these books because I want to know what the hype is. And then I read 
four Twilight books in like four days. Mm -hmm. And they, you're right, like they're okay. They're not Mm -hmm. the best books I've ever read, but they are entertaining enough that I wanted to know what happened and how it happened. And I I remember being like, Jacob with her daughter? What the? (laughs) I imprinted. Bella. <laughs> Nessie. And I was like, that is a stupid name, guys. Renesme is a stupid you, name. You can come for me for that one, but I am like, no. I'm sorry if you named your kid that. I'm so sorry. It if just made, made no sense. Like, I think the name itself is not bad, but the way she came up with it is stupid. Her mom's? Yeah, it's like you just melt, like, melt them together. Mashed your mom's names together. I don't even care about that. I just don't think it's a good name. But weird. 33 year old me is like, Charlie, you could get it. (laughs) Charlie, you could get it. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm here for it. You (sighs) here for it? Yeah. All right. On that note, I've embarrassed myself. So we'll see you next week. (laughs) Bye.